Installing an Active Directory Child Domain. In the previous video, we installed our first Active Directory server, and in many small companies, one or maybe two domains are probably enough to do the job. But in larger companies or geographically dispersed companies, or for other reasons that we've talked about in previous videos, it's highly likely that one domain won't be enough. Now, as we learned in our introduction to Active Directory video, domains are really only security boundaries around the objects inside our network. So in this video, we're going to see how we can install a child domain of our parent domain, winstructorlab.com. In our current structure that we built in the previous video, we have a couple of domain controllers called DCO1 and DCO2, although for space, we've only included the reference to DCO1 here. And these two domain controllers are of course installed into a domain called winstructorlab.com. So we'll be building upon what we started by adding a new child domain to our existing network. And this child domain is going to be called london.winstructorlab.com and it will be installed on a server called DCO3. Now this entire network consisting of one or more domains, in our case we're going to have two domains, is known as a domain tree. Now not until we add new domains that don't share a contiguous namespace, will it technically become a forest? Well, that depends on who you talk to really. Some people maintain that you can't have a forest with only one tree, and that really makes sense, but Microsoft themselves refer to it as a forest when you have your first domain. So who's right? Well, either way, both are right, since you can only have one single domain in a forest, but most often it's just referred to as a domain. Now you can have one domain tree in a forest, you could also have multiple domains in a forest like you see here, but you'd really call that a domain tree. And of course you could have multiple domain trees in a forest, and some people call that a forest. So if we were to create a whole new domain tree for the domain winstructordev.com, obviously this has a different parent domain than winstructorlab.com does, but we can join these two domains, and at that point we now have two separate domain trees in our forest. Now, this new domain tree, of course, can have as many child domains as we like, and we can continue to create more domain trees as well. But for now, we're only interested in creating our London child domain, so let's get started and install it. So to install our new child domain, we'll need to install another domain controller for the new child domain. So as before, we're going to fire up our server manager by clicking the little grey icon here in the quick launch area. Then in the left hand side of our server management console we'll click on roles and then in the right we'll choose add roles. Now that'll start up the add role wizard so we'll click next and we'll choose the second option here active directory domain services and we'll click next again. Then we'll get our little summary page telling us what active directory domain services is for so we'll just click next. And we'll get another message here telling us that after the installation of Active Directory is complete, we will need to run DC Promo in order to finalize the installation of Active Directory. And we've seen this before, so we'll just click Install, and then Active Directory will begin installing. Now this will take a while, so we'll pause the video here and we'll return in a moment. All right, our installation has finished, and we are reminded once again that we'll need to run the DC Promo tool to complete our installation. So We'll click on the little blue hyperlink here and it starts up the Active Directory Domain Services Wizard and of course we've got the option here of using the advanced mode for installation so let's check that box, we'll click next. We'll get our warning here, we've seen that before, we'll click next. Now like before we have two options, do we want to create a domain controller for a forest that already exists or will this server be a domain controller in a new forest? Now in our previous video we've already installed our winstructorlab.com forest, so this server is going to be part of that forest, it's just going to be in a new domain. So we'll choose the top option here to place this domain controller inside an existing forest, and of course we'll choose the second radio button here to create a new domain in an existing forest. But notice that we can also create a new domain tree root, and that would be useful if we were creating an entirely new domain, something like winstructorsales.com or something entirely different. So we're going to leave the settings here as we've selected and we'll click next. Now we'll need to enter in the name of the domain that this new domain controller is going to be part of. 
So that, of course, is going to be winstructorlab.com. And of course, since we're logged on here with a local administrator account, we're going to have to click on the set button and then provide the details of an account that has permissions to let us create our new domain. So we're just going to use the administrator account and we'll enter in the password and we'll click on OK and then we'll click Next. OK, now we'll need to enter in the fully qualified domain name of the parent domain and we can either type it in manually or we can click on the Browse button and then select our domain there and we'll click OK. And now comes the time for us to enter in our new child domain name. So we'll say that this domain, of course, is for London. So we'll type in London and this will populate the field here down below with the fully qualified domain name of the new child domain, which is going to be london.winstructorlab.com. And that's correct. So we'll click Next. And the wizard will validate our choice just to ensure that it's not already in use. All right, so our wizard's now generated a default NetBIOS name of London, and that's fine, so we'll click Next. And now we'll need to specify what the domain functional level of our new child domain will be. Now we're going to talk more about forest and domain functional levels in another video, but for now I'm going to leave it at Windows 2003, and we'll click Next. And at this stage, we haven't configured any additional sites. We'll accept the default of the default first site name and we'll click Next. All right, now we can select what additional options we want to install on this domain controller. And DNS is already selected since we will need a DNS service. So we'll leave that as it is. But we can also install the global catalog service on this domain controller as well if we like. And by default, it's not selected since the best practice is to separate the global catalog service from the other flexible single master of operations roles, particularly the infrastructure master role, and we're going to discuss this in another video. So it would be a better choice if we were going to install a second domain controller in this child domain to install the global catalog service on the next domain controller. However, this is going to be the only domain controller for this child domain, so we'll want to add the global catalog service to it. So in our case, we're going to check this box, but remember, the golden rule here is that if all of your domain controllers are running the global catalog service, you don't have any issues. But if one or more domain controllers aren't running the global catalog service, then you'll want to move the infrastructure role on its own domain controller that isn't hosting the global catalog service. Again, we're going to talk more about this in another video. So for now, we'll just click Next. Now we'll need to configure a replication partner for the installation of our domain controller. Now we can either let the wizard choose one for us or specify one from the list below. We'll just let the wizard choose and we'll click Next. And now we'll need to specify where we want to store our database folder, our log files folder and the sysfile folder. Now like we've talked about in other videos for best performance, it's recommended that at least the first two options here, the database and log files folder, are stored on separate fault tolerant disks. But that's okay, we're in a lab here, we'll just accept the defaults and click Next. Okay, now we'll need to set our administrator password, and this is what we'll use to restore our system if we need to boot into directory services restore mode. So we'll enter in our password here twice and we'll click Next. Alright, we'll get our summary here of what we're about to do, which is to create a new child domain here called london.winstructor.com in our forest called winstructor.com. Now we'll be running at a domain functional level of Windows Server 2003. And if we scroll down a bit, we can see that we are going to install the global catalog service. This will be a DNS server and we can see the path for all of our files. So we'll go and click Next and the installation will begin. Now, as we saw in our previous videos, this is going to take a while and it will require that our server be restarted. So we'll pause the video here and we'll return once it's complete. Okay, the installation is complete. This server, DCO3, is now an Active Directory domain controller in a new child domain called london.winstructorlab.com. So we'll click Finish. And then we'll need to restart our server. In this video, we've seen just how easy it is 
to create a child domain which joined our parent domain winstructorlab.com in the domain tree. We've also briefly talked about the differences between a domain tree and a forest. We hope you enjoyed this video and we'd like to thank you for